What is up, guys? Welcome back to Grim Entertainment. We are taking a break from our normal box opening videos to do a deck rec today. This is the third video in the series. Uh, and today we're going to be doing Rist the Redeemed. He's a one-drop elf warrior creature uh, with a pay three ability to tap him and put a green and white elf warrior into play. Or you could pay six and basically double tokens. Um, not your average token deck. It's not going to be all elf tribal or anything like that. Um, originally this spawned from a standard deck that I used to play where I elf ramped into Eldrazi. And then I just kind of made a little adjustments there. This is definitely not my most powerful deck, but it does have plenty of ways to win. And it's a lot of fun to, you know, uh, bring to the table and just see what people do with it. Um, so let's go ahead and get into this. Uh, we are coming for your nuts. Do elves even eat nuts? I know squirrels do. You'll find out why we have these sleeves in a little bit. Uh, let's go ahead and start with the lands here. Um, yep. Okay. Bam. So. We've got 30 lands in this deck. Um, the first 12 are... Excuse me. first 11 are forests. Bam. Then we got 12 planes. And if you're doing the math at home, that makes 23... Which leaves us with seven non-basics. Come on, do the math, guys. All right. So the first one we have is going to be Terramorphic Expanse. Um, you know, you could you could go fetch lands, you could, or not fetch lands. Yeah, you could go fetch lands actually. You could also go uh, Pr Prismatic Vista and Fabled Passage. I'll probably upgrade to those eventually, but this deck hasn't seen too much upgrading. Um, I don't know why. I, I, I kind of like playing it the way it is. I know it could use some upgrades. We'll get there. Uh, Evolving Wilds, same difference. You got the old Temple of Plenty here. Um, Scryland comes in tapped, though. Uh, might be a good upgrade to put in the Bountiful Promenade or uh, Horizon Canopy. Um, Sun Petal Grove, it's the only check land in here. Orin Reef the Vastwood, uh, giving us a green mana. It comes in tapped, but that ability to put a counter on each green creature that enters the battlefield is huge. Uh, especially when you see some of the token manipulation we'll be doing later. Instead of having them come in as 1-1s, one they can be 2-2s, two which can add up quickly. Uh, Wirewood Lodge. I'm sure you guys, uh, if you know anything about elves, elves get out of hand really quick. Uh, their tap abilities are nuts, and so if you can untap an elf, then you can sometimes double your mana. You have Maya Hollow. Uh, getting pretty spendy these days. Let's you add a colorless mana to your mana pool. And also lets you pay one green and tap it to regenerate a creature, which is huge sometimes. Alright. Let's get into the creatures. There are 39 creatures, including the general. Which is Rist Redeemed, in case you forgot. <laughs> uh... All right, so did these the same as I always do. Uh, started with ramp and then removal and then utility. There's not too much removal in this deck. There's a little bit. We'll get to those. All right, land of war elves. Mana dork. Mana dork elves. Got it. All right, Yarga Warcaller. Um, and they're also going to be from lowest casting cost up to the higher ones in the back. Yarga Warcaller, he's just a one drop. Gives you a 1-1 one, one elf. Um, you know, and he enters the battlefield with a 1-1 one, one counter for each time he has that multi-kicker kicked. Um, and other elves are going to get 1-1 one, one for each time, or each counter he has. Uh, that multi-kicker costs two, so ideally you want to play this a little bit later so that you can give all your el and keep them on the board so all your elves have uh, more power and toughness. But sometimes you just play him for one so that he counts towards that elf stack number. Um, Copperhorn Scout. Uh, whenever this attacks, you get to untap each other creature you control. Like we've already said, elves tap and do stuff, so if you can untap and do it again, that's always good. Uh, Rafelos, yes, he is banned. Uh, we already know. Rafelos is banned, but he gives you a green mana for each forest you control. So, uh, you know, he's in here. We play with banned cards. Gets out of hand. But, I mean, when people are playing fast bond in the Mildrotha deck, I mean, how are you going to complain? I'm going to play some banned stuff too then. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, Priest of Titania. Um, Titania. However you want to say it. Add one green for each elf in play. In play. So if you play somebody else with elves and you guys both have these, this thing can be adding 10 to 15 mana a turn. It gets out of hand. Uh, Devoted Druid. Uh, we got a card coming up. This will combo with. It's a nice little mana dork. And uh, if you have the other card that combos with it, it'll can, it can be an infinite green mana dork. 
uh, with the ability to put a minus one minus one counter on him to untap him. So, I mean, regardless, you can kill it for two mana if you don't have anything else going on. Joiner Adept. This is Chromatic Lantern on a stick. 2-1 body for two. Good stuff. Uh, Elvish Visionary. 1-1 one, one for two, but when it comes in, he gets to draw a card. Wirewood Herald, when it dies, you're going to look for an elf card, reveal it, and put it into your hand. Shuffle your library. A lot of elves in here, so that's always fun. Fauna Shaman. Um, basically letting you wheel creatures, so you can just sacrifice one, or excuse me, discard one, and search your library for a better one, reveal it, and put it into your hand for one and a tap effect. Usually the first thing I'm going for is Elvish Piper if I don't have it. <laughs> Viridian Zealot. Um, paying two to sacrifice it and destroy an artifact or an enchantment. This came from... I don't even know what the, what set this is from. I've had this card a long time. Uh, Seeker of Skybreak. Just letting me tap this to untap another creature. I'm trying to double up that mana or to do two cool effects. Fauna Shaman or, you know, Elvish Piper. Uh, Tajura Preserver. Making it so spells and abilities my opponent's control can't make me sacrifice permanents for two. Gives you a little protection. It's kind of fun. Nisa's Chosen uh, never goes away. If it goes into the graveyard from the battlefield, it just goes back into my on the bottom of my library. Um, this one goes with the Nisa Ravain um, Planeswalker, which we do have in here. 2-3 um, body for two, though. All right, Vizier of Remedies. This one goes with that Devoted Druid, so this makes it so that when you give that 1-1 one, one counter to Devoted Druid to untap it, so you can tap it again for mana, uh, if you have this creature on the battlefield, you can do that infinitely because this takes away the minus 1-1 one, minus one counter that causes that ability. Um, and so these two, in combination with the other, give you infinite mana. Vizier of Remedies and Devoted Druid. Voice of Resurgence, this was the only card worth anything from Dragon's Maze, and then they reprinted it, so now it ain't worth nothing, unless you're playing it, and then it's still pretty good. Whenever an opponent casts a spell during your turn, or when Voice of Resurgence dies, I'll get a green and white elemental that has power and toughness equal to the number of creatures you control. So, you know, that could be literally a million. <laughs> Elvish Archdruid, um... Other elves I get have plus one, plus one, and he's going to get uh, the ability to tap him to add one green for each elf you control. He's basically uh, one cost more for a Priest of Titania with a little extra. Llanowar Tribe, uh, three green to add three green. This is like having three Llanowar elves, but it doesn't play like it. Um, I find that when I have this card in my hand, it's hard for me to come up with the three green mana sometimes. Um, and then also because it adds three on a three, three body, people tend to take this out quickly. Uh, still like it though. What else? Three drop lets you just search for a forest. Um, you can grab the, uh, green, white shockland. You can grab, uh, if you're playing, uh, you know, a, a deck that's not this one, you can grab any of them triomes that have green. It's just a, a forest card. It doesn't have to be a basic land. It can be any forest. So that's cool. All right, Imperius Perfect. This just got reprinted in, what, uh, Commander Legends, right? Um, other elf creatures get 1-1, one, one, and I can pay one and tap it to put a green elf warrior into play. Good card. Reclamation Sage, just a 3-drop, but when it comes in, I can destroy an artifact or enchantment. There's a lot of artifact and enchantment hate in this deck. Azuri, Renegade Leader. Um, if I don't have that Yavimaya Hollow, I can pay one green to regenerate that elf that I need um, and then I can pay 5 to give all of my elves 3-3 three, three and trample until end of turn alright we got midnight guard uh, whenever another creature enters the battlefield you untap midnight guard this will combo with a um, an enchantment later it's called presence of gond and it's going to make it so that uh, we can make infinite elf tokens I'll show you elvish piper uh, it's a 1-1, one, one, so it's really easy to take care of, but uh, you can pay 1 and tap this to put a creature card from your hand onto the battlefield. And uh, we run some big nasty creatures in here, so that gets abused. <laughs> Sky Shroud Poacher. Um, this is basically another way to just get whatever elf you need, whether it be your mana elf or your um, fauna shaman, whatever you need. Um... And you put it directly into play. 
That's always good on a 2 2 body for four. We got Nylea, God of the Hunt, four drop, indestructible god. Uh, as long as your devotion to green is less than five, she's not a creature. Other creatures I control have trample, and then I can pay four to give a creature plus two plus two until end of turn. On a six six body, though, if you have that devotion up, which is crazy for four, I'll, that's that's a lot of value for a four drop. Immaculate Magistrate, another card reprinted in Commander Legends. Um, I, I promise you guys, I've had this out. This is like the third deck, or so. I think this is the actually yeah, this is the third deck that I built in my uh, EDH career, if you would. Um, but they bring in a lot of elves in Commander Legends, didn't they? Anyway, Maxlet Magistrate. Uh, you just put a 1-1 one -one counter on target creature for each elf you control. So uh, try to beef up Riss and swing for commander damage, you know? Uh, Karamitra, God of Harvest. I'm pretty sure this got reprinted as an etched foil. 6-7 um, Indestructible for 5, as long as your devotion uh, is less than 7. But this one counts for green and white, so it's easier to hit that devotion level to make it a creature. Um, but whenever you cast a spell, a creature spell, I can search my library for a forest or a plains card, put it on the battlefield tapped. Again, forest or plains, not a basic, just forest or plains. Um, Sigarda, Host of Herons. Um, and I think you guys might have seen me play Kona's Sigarda deck before. It's pretty mean. Um, but she's in the 99 here. Five drop, flying hexproof. Spells and abilities can't cause me to sacrifice permanents. Again, another way to just protect myself because I don't want to be sacrificing. Uh, I think my pod might have had quite a few things making me sacrifice. Um, <laughs> and so I apparently needed protection when I was building this deck. Uh, Sun Titan. Let's see if we can get this to focus a little bit. There we go. Sun Titan. Uh, he's a six drop. And uh, whenever he enters the battlefield or attacks, you may return target permanent card with converted mana cost three or less to the battlefield. And elves are cheap. So we're trying to bring back some of those useful elves. And... Uh, he also has a 6-6 Vigilance, so that's nice. You can attack with him, and then he's still there to block. Elish Norn, Grand Cenobite. Um, you know, 7-drop, 4-7 Vigilance. Other creatures I control get plus 2, plus 2. But the big kicker here is that creatures my opponents control get minus 2, minus 2. And in EDH Commander, a lot of our uh, utility creatures are going to get killed with that minus 2, minus 2. So a lot of stuff that's on the battlefield for tap effects or for ETBs or pay abilities uh, are going to die to this. Mean card, mean card. Terastodon, getting up there now at the 8 cost. Uh, I love this card and I hate this card. Uh, this seems to be a target for, I think it's, is it bribery or treachery? When people take it out of your library. If they know you run a Terastodon, they'll, run, they'll, they'll use that card to search your library to bring this out and destroy three of your good pieces, and then you get an elephant. Um, it's always fun when you Terastodon. It's never fun to be Terastodon. It's the old Terasty Nasty. He is also a 9-9. Nine -nine. It's just insane. Uh, Polyraptor. Uh, we, it is a token deck, and for 8, you can pop out this 5-5, five -five, which seems unassuming, but whenever it's dealt damage, you create a token that's a copy of Polyraptor. Which is insane. I um, actually had a couple of my dinosaur deck. I've had a couple games in a stalemate because whenever he enters the battlefield, it gets delta damage, and then so does the token, and then it just ends in a draw. But it's always fun. You can multiple five five tokens is always cool. Uh, Raya Dawnbringer, guys. This one's old school. Um, at the beginning of your upkeep, you may return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. It's a four six flying angel. Cost nine though. You know, well, oof. Nine for that. E. Iona, Shield of Ameria. Also a nine drop, but uh, when she comes in as a 7-7 seven, seven Flying Angel, I can name a, or choose a color, and then opponents can't cast spells of the chosen color. Um, usually I'll just see what common color all of my opponents have together and stop it. Or, you know, uh, if we got a guy who's playing mono, well, you're not playing anymore. <laughs> it's a mean card. I think it's banned also, but we still play banned cards. So, uh, Impervious Great Worm. Uh, this has nothing to do with anything in the deck. It's just a 16-16 indestructible for 10. That's, whoa. But he still die. You know, he still gets removed by Swords to Plowshares. And it also has Convoke, so you can tap creatures to pay for one and it's of its mana cost. Um, it's just, it's brutal. 16-16 indestructible is hard to deal with. 
Uh, Olamog, ceaseless hunger on this one. Uh, when you cast him, you exile two permanents. He's a 10-10, indestructible for 10. But that effect of when he attacks defending player exiles, not mills, exiles the top 20 cards of his or her library, that's just rude. Uh, ultimately, my goal would be to double that effect with Strionic Resonator or something. I don't have it in here yet. Um, but yeah, I would, I would definitely be wanting to double that effect and see if I can exile 40 cards off the top of my opponent's library. And then, I don't know, maybe take a shot of their tears or something. Uh, just absolutely rude. <laughs> Uh, and then we got Olmog the Infinite Gyre. Gyre. Uh, when you cast him, destroy target permanent. All right, that's a good start. What else is going on here? Annihilator 4. So whenever this guy attacks, he, the defending player sacrifices four permanents before anything else even happens. That's nice. Uh, Olmog is also indestructible. Jeez, okay, what else? There's nothing else that could make this card even more broke, is there? Oh, when he put when he goes into a graveyard from anywhere... Uh, his owner shuffles him and his graveyard into their library. So if you have this in your deck, you cannot be milled out because you'll just keep cycling your library. Crazy. Got to exile that out of the out of the out of the hand or something before you can actually mill somebody out if they're running it. Hit to be trace twelve drop annihilator two. God, I'm, I want him to reprint that, but at the same time, I don't. Such a devastating effect. Uh, whenever an opponent sacrifices a non-token permanent, put that card onto the battlefield under your control. Ouch. Yeah. I got a friend who uh, who likes to do that. I think it's Mimoplasm. He goes for it that betrays and uh, something else and, and Shieldred. It's just like, dude, come on. All right, those are the creatures. Now we'll move on to the rest of the deck. We got Worldly Tutor. Searching for a creature card, putting it on top of the library. Always good. Source of Plowshares, one drop, exile the creature, gain life. They're gaining life for its power. Oh well. Silence! I kill you. Uh, your opponents can't cast spells this turn. Rude. Fog. Stops combat for one turn. Super annoying. Back to nature. Two drop that destroys all enchantments. This card is super powerful. Uh, enchantments are huge in EDH and Commander. Um, I, I don't I don't know why this card isn't played more. Uh, I don't see anybody recommending it. I haven't played against it too much, but for two to destroy all perm or uh, enchantments, it's just uh, it's mean. Uh, Druid's Deliverance prevent all combat damage and populate. So it's basically fog with populate. Okay, here's the bid bad. Don't destroy me you guys we play banned cards and sometimes the only way to deal with banned cards and ramp is to destroy all lands uh when you got somebody playing Muldratha with azusa exploration and wayward sword tooth out on the battlefield you're just like dude how do i stop this guy and the answer is destroy all lands and hope that they can't have Muldratha back out on the battlefield <laughs> um but yeah, you, uh, you know, it, it's it's rude, but if you have your elves out and you destroy all lands, then you can still tap mana with your elves. So, you know, it is what it is. A lot of people don't like to destroy lands. Um, sometimes you just have to, though. Creeping Corrosion, destroying all artifacts. That takes care of uh, Brea in general. Any any artifact deck, really. It's like, okay, well, there goes your whole deck. Trying for the Hordes. Uh, I run this in almost every deck that has green just because, you know, Infect is mean. Um, I'm going to get Trample, 1-1, one, one, and Infect on every creature. So for four, that's a, that's a good card. Global Ruin, um, just another land destruction card. I've had this card forever. It's very well loved. Um, but this one at least lets everybody choose one land of each basic type and then sacrifice the rest. It doesn't completely wipe the lands. Uh, route, uh, destroy all creatures that can't be regenerated. Uh, this one's a good one because it's a sorcery, but if you have the mana to do so, you can let somebody like myself uh, waste their entire combo, make as many tokens as they can, and then when they're about to swing at you, boom, 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 boom. Instant. Seven speed. Seven drop instant speed. Jeez, God, apologies. Um, and destroy all creatures. I've actually baited a couple of those out with it. Uh, Creeping Renaissance. Choose a card 
type and then return all of those from the graveyard to your hand. Permanent type, excuse me. Uh, so usually it's going to be creatures for me. Sometimes I'll bring back all my enchantments. Um, if I've destroyed all lands, I'll bring back lands and it has flashback for seven. Overwhelming Stampede, um, just giving every creature Trample and XX, where X is the greatest that I control uh, power. Sometimes I'm only giving creatures 2-2, two, two, but they get Trample. Sometimes I'm giving them 10-10. It all just depends on what's on the field. All right, Summoning Trap. Um, so basically, if anybody counters your creatures this turn, then you can peel seven off the top and put one of the creature cards onto the battlefield and the rest on the bottom of your library for free. It's good. The trap cards are pretty decent. Uh, so Vala's Stampede. So I actually like running some of these Council's Dilemmas cards. Expropriate's really popular. Uh, I think Grenzo's Rebuttal is one. Um, there's a couple. Uh, but this one, starting with you, each player votes for wild or free. For each wild vote, you're going to reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a creature card and put it on top, or put it onto the battlefield, and then put the rest on a uh, shuffle into your library. Uh, and then for each per, uh, free vote, you're going to put a permanent card from your hand onto the battlefield. So if you, you know, either way they vote, unless you have no hand, then everybody's going to vote for free, and then you kind of just get screwed. Um, but you could start with yourself, so you can at least vote for one free creature. Um, and you know, you're going to be playing two to four people in a in a commander game. So depending on how your group plays, uh, so you could be potentially getting you know anywhere from one to four creatures out on the battlefield uh, from your library from the top. So um, yeah, it's a good card. Cost six though. Wave of Vitriol. This is another really mean card. Um, each player sacrifices all artifacts, enchantments, and non-basic lands. And then for each land they sacrifice, they may search their library for a basic land and put it on the battlefield tapped. Uh, so if you play people who don't play uh, basic lands and you play basic lands, then you can wipe the board and put yourself at a pretty distinct advantage. Um, you can keep basic lands tapped so that when it comes back around, you can start casting stuff again. Um, this actually works well for me because I have a few players in my playgroup that have some decks that don't have any basic lands. All right, Earthcraft. Uh, tap an untapped creature you control to untap target basic land. Um, and this makes some shenanigans happening. Uh, I mean, but you can also, you know, even if you just have five elves and you need five more mana to do something, you can just tap five elves and then untap five lands. It's a great card. It's getting pricey. Aura Shards, uh, obviously we're playing tokens, so whenever a creature comes into play, I'll be destroying an artifact or an enchantment. Mean. Uh, Squirrel Nest, okay. So this one, this goes into the, or goes on to a basic land. And with Earthcraft on the battlefield, uh, you tap that basic land to put a squirrel onto the battlefield. And then Earthcraft's ability makes you tap a creature so it doesn't matter if it has summoning sickness. So you can just basically make infinite squirrels if you have this on a basic land and Earthcraft in play. And that is why we're coming for your nuts. I've actually gotten the infinite squirrel combo off a couple times these last games. Uh, the first time I did it, I got absolutely shut down with a Blasphemous Act for one mana. It was terrible. Um, and then last week, uh, I pulled it off. Somebody destroyed all creatures, but they didn't have an answer. I did it again the next turn and ended up winning. Um... Speaking of winning with infinite combos, Presence of Gond. So if you guys remember that Midnight Guard creature from earlier, that um, whenever a creature enters the battlefield, you untap him. Uh, you basically enchant it with this, and then you tap it. You get a 1-1 one, one green elf warrior creature, and uh, when that creature enters the battlefield, you untap Midnight Guard, and then you just make infinite elf warrior tokens. So there's your third infinite combo for this deck. Uh, one for mana, and so far two for tokens. Uh, Bear Umbra, uh, it's a four drop, but uh, the creature you put this on gets two two, and whenever it attacks, doesn't have to deal damage. Just whenever it attacks, you untap all your lands. Um, so it's just value, and then it gives you that totem armor, which is a great effect. I'd like to see him reprint. Um, so you know, I like to put this on my general. So if somebody tries to take out my general, or you know, whatever my most valuable creature is, when they try to take it out, you remove all damage and then uh, destroy the aura instead, unless it's an exile effect and then it still works but if the enchanted creature would be destroyed 
Remove all damage and destroy this aura instead. Totem armor. Good stuff. Marshall's Anthem. Four drop. Uh, creatures you control get one one. But if you pay the multi kicker when it comes in, uh, it's one and one white. And you can return X target creature cards from your graveyard to the battlefield. I think I've kicked this for like six before. Um, it, uh, it's, it, you know, you can bring back six elves or you can bring back, it doesn't matter what they are. You can bring back freaking Terastodon and Olamog, it doesn't matter. Uh, but it's a good card. It's definitely worth playing in a deck like this where you can make a whole crap ton of mana. Um, Defense of the Heart, another good card, very well loved. Uh, during your upkeep, if you control, or if your opponents control three or more creatures, you sacrifice this, uh, and search your library for two creature cards and put them into play. Uh, usually I'm going to go for Terastodon if I need to destroy something, or, um, Elish Norn if I want to get, you know, beef something up so that I can swing. Um, that's going to be one of the two choices, and the other two is going to be one of the Olamogs, for sure. Um, that's always fun, though. Defense of the Heart's a good card. We got Mirari's Wake, uh, just giving you plus one, plus one for all your creatures, but then whenever you tap a land for mana, it's going to tap for two. Eldrazi Conscription, a little eight drop tribal enchantment. Uh, it's going to give whatever creature you enchant 10 10 and Annihilator 2. Oh, with Trample. So I like to try to put this on wrists and uh, see if I can't swing in for 11 Trample and Annihilator 2, because that's always fun. <laughs> Uh, mana Vault, you know, it's a one drop, adds three colorless mana, and then you just gotta pay four during your upkeep to untap it, or it deals one damage to you, but sometimes it's worth just having that three colorless immediately, and you can worry about untapping it later. Alter the Brood, um, if you have any of those, uh, token things going, and this on the battlefield, we can just mill out our entire opponent, uh, you know, all of our opponents, actually, you just mill everybody. Um, and I haven't got to do that in this deck yet. It is really fun. I've done it with Animar, but I have not done it with this deck. Uh, last artifact in the deck is Godsend. Um, it's just a three drop. Um, equip creature gets three, three. It has an equip cost of three, so it costs six. But, uh, whenever the equipped creature blocks or becomes blocked by one or more creatures, you can exile one of them. So it's a nice little way to deal with stuff. Um, if you want to be able to get through for damage or... If you just want to block somebody's best creature and exile it. Um, and then the, the other cool part about this is that uh, if you have some of those more prominent creatures in the game that everyone likes to run in Commander, uh, if you've exiled a card with Godsend, opponents can't cast cards with the same name. So uh, if you're playing two people that have Shieldred and you exile one of them, well, then the other guy can't cast his Shieldred. Um, but you can because it doesn't say you. It just says opponents. It's a good card. And then we got Nisa Ravain. Um, looking for that Nisa's Chosen just for the elf, uh, you know, the elf edition. Um, and then you can gain two life for each elf you control. That's always fun. Uh, if you get lucky enough to kick off that last effect, though, and search your library for any number of elf cards, um, that can be devastating. And then we got uh, Nisa, who shakes the world. Uh, I don't really use her for much other than her static effect, but for five, you can just double up your forests. Um, and she has a plus one to put three counters on one non-creature land you control and untap it. And it becomes a zero zero elemental with vigilance and haste. So, I mean, you can, you can turn a land into a, a nasty little beater with this. Um, and then that minus eight land you control of indestructible, uh, it search your library for any number of forests and put them onto the battlefield tapped. Never got that off, but man, that would be cool if I could get that off and then destroy everything with Armageddon and still have it. That'd be a that'd be a deck goal. <laughs> and then last but not least, we got a Johnny Mentor of Heroes. Um, he's just distributing three one one counters uh, among any number of creatures one two or three. Uh, or I can I like to look at the top four cards in my library and reveal an aura creature or planeswalker and put it into my hand. Um, if you're lucky enough to get that last one off there though, gain a hundred life. Um, you know, that's that's crazy, but in, in EDA, I don't really know what gaining 100 life is going to do for you, because somebody could still two-card combo or hit you for general damage. So, um, anyways, that is my Risk the Redeemed deck. Um, if you guys like the deck or, you know, uh, ideas for another piece that would combo up or whatever, we'll uh, 
leave me a comment down there um, if you like what I'm doing subscribe to the channel uh, make sure you guys leave a comment and subscribe to be entered in that giveaway uh, we're gonna start that December 1st 12 days of Christmas one winner every day the prize will be announced the same time as the winner um, and then uh, make sure you guys come back and check out that opening of War of the Spark thanks for watching